Afternoon Hotspot continues right here live on YouTube, on Facebook, and on KUM TV 8. I'm Jason Salas once again. And you know, guys, a couple of weeks ago, I was doing a story over at Docomo Pacific. You know, I got tons of friends over there. And the main man, Rod Boss, the CEO, just happened to pop in. And we started talking about the changing nature of work and how he's implementing those changes at his company. And he was actually saying that this is the way things are going to be from now on. Fascinating discussion. So I thought we would have the boss literally in studio. I've been waiting. Sorry, Rod. I've been waiting <laughs> all week to make that joke. Very good to see you here. So th thanks for coming by. And you know, thanks for giving us some of your time. Because I remember when you and I were having a conversation, you were saying that like a lot of your, your administrative and strategic staff um, when I did that story on you guys, they said this was the first time they've all been in the same room in maybe a year and a half a or so. Time, yeah. And you, you were actually emphasizing this is going to be the way things are um, from now on. Yeah, you know, I get asked that all the time. Uh, people say, so when are we all coming back to work? Mm -hmm. And I said, we're, we're not. Mm. I mean, we're still working, but we're not, uh, not in the office. And, uh, you know, even my own, you know, HR department has asked me, what's our, what's our policy? And I said, it's a pretty simple policy is that we're flexible. And so flexibility is what we're, we're embracing. We were really the first ones who, uh, when the first cases were announced in Guam, actually, mm -hmm. we went virtual. Our entire call center, yep. everything went, went virtual at that time. So we've, uh, we've had to be creative. Um, there's been you know, things that we have to figure out as we go. And in fact, we're still figuring them out. Mm. Well, and I think that's part of, uh, part of the genius behind this and everything is, is I know so many people that we've talked to on the show, business leaders, people with, you know, decades and decades of strategic and operational experience like yourself. And they said, you know, we can't just nail it down to one particular strategy and stick with it because things change on a daily basis. Sure. And what we've done is we've actually asked each work group to decide what combination works best. We have mm. some that will meet. Everybody comes in the office one day a week. They can do collaboration, they can you know, do brainstorming and creativity, which is something that we kind of missed when everybody's virtual. Mm -hmm. They were able to do that, and, uh, and so again, everybody kind of finds a mix that works best for them. Mm. Yeah. Now, the one big thing as, you know, as a supervisor of many, many hundreds of people, how has this been received? by the workforce over there, like initially and, and now, now that hopefully they've gotten used to it? Um, it's been received really well. I mean, there were some, you know, some bumps at the first where people, people had a hard time doing it. I know there are people that, you know, have uh, kids at home and things that makes it a little more difficult, mm -hmm. but they have that option to come in. They've got the, their office, they can go in if they need it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that you know we're at a point where it's been received so well that if we tried to go back, uh, people wouldn't be happy about it. The pushback might be a little bit more yeah. severe then. Yeah, because uh, you know the people like that freedom. Once they once they get that that flexibility and freedom, they learn how to work in that environment. Mm -hmm. you know, there's something interesting is someone asked me early on when I said that we were we were completely virtual. Um, he said, "Really, you trust your employees to do that?" And I, you know, I had to think about that, and I said, "Actually, yeah, we do. We trust our people." Mm -hmm. And the and what has happened is because they're not in the office, uh, they have to. We have to measure them. We have to measure what they're doing on a regular basis. Sure. So we're, we're we've got KPIs that we're checking all the time. So if anything, our productivity's gone up because interesting. You know, they, they we we know exactly what's getting done or not getting done. Mm. And somebody could come into the office and sit behind the computer all day long not really be getting anything done. And as an That's executive, been exposed. And, as, and as, as an executive, when you are overseeing like a meeting, does it really matter that staffer A may be joining from the beach, you know, like I'm joining in a, in a video call, staffer B may be in line at the bank doing stuff as long as they're producing, contributing to the yeah. mission and, you know, and getting work done. And like you said, they're hitting those key performance indicators. Exactly, and it, and it really, I've found that it doesn't matter. Mm. It doesn't really matter at all. Um, the the the, I kind of thought I was progressive that way even before this happened, mm -hmm. right? I said pay for, product, for productivity, not presence. I've been saying all these things, but I really wasn't embracing it. It's like the tools we have. We have Zoom, we, have, we, we use Teams. Mm -hmm. um, we all had it, but now we really are a lot better at using it, mm -hmm. right? So I think that we've, I, you know, for me, it's been a, you know, a, a big eye-opener. And I feel like that's one of the areas that we really need to learn from this experience of the pandemic mm -hmm. is that we have all these tools, we can use these tools to make our lives better, mm -hmm. so. Now I gotta ask, have you had conversations, Rob, with your contemporaries, you know, like other business leaders and other executives, maybe in other different industries, because, you know, working in technology, you know, that's, we kind of uh, have been used to doing things remotely sure. or doing things in a video chat format, doing things in, you know, uh, IRC going like all the way back 
ICQ yeah. even. Yeah. Um, have you talked to like other people and said, you know, to kind of evangelize this new sure. revelation? Yeah, I mean, I talk about it all the time because we, we're living this life right now. But I think that the, uh, the thing that I found is it has to start from the top. If the, if the leaders at the top embrace it, there you go. then it goes all the way down the organization. If they, are, if they just can't let go of that old school, I got to see you, I got to see mm -hmm. you face to face. You know, we have some policies like when we're, when we're on Zoom, anybody who's speaking flips on their camera so that that way we can still have that kind of interaction and mm -hmm. we, can, we can get that. So, you know, we've had to make a few things like that, that we, rules that we want to make to keep things going. I think we'll, we'll evolve as we get better at it. Mm -hmm. Now, let me hold your feet to the fire, sir, because, <laughs> because I know, you know, as long as I've been able to, to cover you and the very fine work you've done at Docomo Pacific, you know, you're a hands-on manager. Um, you're very metrics-driven. You like to be involved in the operations and make sure you guys are performing at an mm -hmm. optimal level. How many days are you away from the, and say like in a 40 hour week, like any of us work 40 hours a week? So I would, uh, you know, I, again, it's, it's different every week, but I would say two or three days a week I'm in the office, okay. just depending on it. And I offer all my, all my direct report meetings, I offer it either way. Mm -hmm. I said I'm happy to have it in person or on Zoom if something's going on. So. Which is precisely the point, you've got the flexibility. Exactly. exactly. And I know I've done an interview with you when you were actually in your head, you got a lovely living room by the way. <laughs> <laughs> very, you. very nice. Thanks. Yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah. And I, you know, we had to, we all had to kind of make our space at home because mm -hmm. we, now we, you know, we work in both places, mm -hmm. so yeah. Now strategically taking, you know, this, this knowledge and the fact that you said productivity has actually increased from this, I would think this would be a heck of a recruitment tool for, you know, for future staffers of Docomo Pacific and say, you know, this is the way we work. You know, we, we, you've obviously got skills that interested us. We want you to contribute and, you know, you've got the flexibility to, you know, do what you got to do with your life too. Sure. And I think that's, we hope that that is uh, something that will, you know, people, like-minded people will want to be part of that mm -hmm. uh, organization as well. So I think it's been, it, I think it's good. And I, I, I don't see it any. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What have the last two years, you know, taught you as someone who, you know, has, you know, the grand 50,000 foot view about, you know, running a company in the modern age, specifically a technology company, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in very, very changing, very challenging times? Because, I mean, you guys have had a heck of a lot of work. Yeah, you know, there's, uh, I think probably go back to the word flexibility. We mm -hmm. had to be flexible. Another thing is, you know, a lot of people were kind of frozen wondering what's going to happen next. In our case, you know, I think our, what, what has helped us a lot is that we didn't take our foot off the gas. We've, we've been launching new propositions. We've been offering new things. Um, that flexibility, you know, early on, uh, we, we, we had a problem because we were shut down, right? Mm -hmm. People couldn't come to our stores. Everybody, you know, didn't know what to do. People want to pay their bills. Well, we got to keep the lights on, so we got to have, have that coming in. So we, we uh, built a drive through behind mm -hmm. our building in Tomini. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, the customers, you know, loved that and they embraced it so much, we actually made it permanent. You've probably seen the yep. uh, permanent drive through I think, mm -hmm. as far as I know, we're the only t telephone company with a, uh, with a drive through But our customers love it and they love to be able to have that flexibility to come in and, and just hit the drive through check their, make their payment, check on their bills. They can do all that while they're still in their cars. So that's something that has actually change the way we approach business and it'll mm -hmm. continue after this is gone. Well, and I do want to say, ladies and gentlemen, like looking right there, I did give Rod the option to possibly join today's interview, you know, via video chat, you know, kind of like illustrating the point, but you've been nice enough to actually come in, <laughs> come and talk to me face to face. And I always appreciate that. So Rod Boss from Docomo Pacific, thank you. Thank you for your time. Congratulations on your achievements and uh, best of luck going forward. Thank you. All right. Please stay tuned, everybody. The hotspot will continue right here on KUM. We're coming back after this.